अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय मेहर बाबा प्लीज बी विद अस थ्रू आउट दिस जर्नी एंड गाइड अस थैंक यू बाबा जय बाबा लविंग जय बाबा टू ऑल ऑफ यू I'll just first put it on gallery view so I can see your faces. Okay. So we are reading Meher Baba's early messages to the West. Last time uh, we went through. We are in part one, and part one contains six messages, and we have already done two messages. Today we'll try to complete message number three and message number four. So we are on page number nine. Actually, I had decided to do the screen presentation, but it seems difficult. Slowly, I will learn one by one things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if anyone has book page number nine, if anyone wish to read that also, please let me know. And this is message at the residence of Mr. Graham Phelps Stokes, given by Sri Mehr Baba at a reception. In his honor, New York, May twenty-two, nineteen thirty-two, and this was then read out by Meredith Starr. So, here it goes. Baba says, "I'm so very pleased to see you again." So lovely. Among you are many of the first Americans I met last time. i was here so i regard you as old friends so lovely that's the human side of god as um, uh, mr bill lee pay said so nice so touching yeah. no doubt some of you have seen various newspaper reports about myself and my work many of these are misleading but it is not to be wondered at if at if journalists do not understand my work or pander to the desire for sensation so openly baba is telling and so much boldness and daring <laughs> so he is telling that journalists have not understand understood his work and language and that's true we cannot understand his language fully further baba says i do not intend to found any religion cult creed or society there are already far too many of these organizations i have come to help people realize their ideals in daily life the widespread dissatisfaction in modern life is due to the gulf between theory and practice between the ideal and its realization on earth the spiritual and material aspects of life are widely separated instead of being closely united there is no fundamental opposition between spirit and matter or if you like between life and form the apparent opposition is due to wrong thinking due to ignorance hence the remedy lies in the continuous practice of right thinking the remedy is right thinking to permanent illumination resulting from the balance between the head and heart this is the illumination which i intend to give so he has made his aim clear and as always baba has again emphasized that he has not come to form any religion cult organization which are there already ample of them are there 
and this being the end of the cycle, he has made his mission clear in the West that for what he has come. He has also made it clear that he has come to help people to realize these ideals in the daily life. Theory is different. It will not help for the God realization, but it will help us to guide how we should lead our daily life. So theory and practice, that implementation is very, very, very important. Many people ask what advice Baba has given, what are the orders Baba has given, whether Baba has told anything to do for the realization of God. And I think the repentance prayer Baba has given it is not only to repent on, but to implement on each and every factor of it. Not simple things, not to lie, not to be hypocritic, not to do harm to others, say good words and good deeds and all that. Another thing is, but my wish Baba has given. What is his wish? If we call ourselves lovers of Baba, so he is our beloved. So what is our duty is to make him happy. How? By honoring his wish. And he has made it very clear in my wish how we should lead our life. And how to love God. Third important thing. We can take as his order how to love God. Which is maybe it might be difficult to implement, but not impossible. So these are the things already for ages they have told through various cults and creeds and organizations and paths and religions, but we fail to implement them. So he has come to help us and he has given very practical ways for that. So very practical ways to implement them in our daily lives. So he says, important thing, spiritual and material aspects of life are widely separated. This is a very important point. Spiritualism cannot be separate from materialism. It is part and parcel because Nothing is out of God. Everything is in Him. So this gross word and illusion is also in Him. So spirituality includes everything. Nothing is out of spirituality. So it cannot, this is very important point. Baba has emphasized always that spirituality is not different and it's not out of the daily life and our materialistic life. Rather, this gross world and this daily life and materialistic life helps in a way for getting the God realization. How? So, living in this world, we spend our sanskaras, which helps to develop further our consciousness to make our consciousness, consciousness free of impressions. So through in this grass world, by leading this daily life, we are spending our impressions and it helps to eliminate more and more our consciousness. Then again, Baba says, there is no opposition between spirituality and materialism, between spirit and matter. So Baba has used the word matter for this for gross word. The opposition is in thinking. We think in a wrong way. We think I am Betty, I am Meher Kripa, I am Mr. Prakash, I am Jeevi. No, what are we? We all are God but we don't experience it. 
we think we all are different. Oh, these are Westerners. Oh, these are Easterners. Oh, she is a girl. She is a, he is a man. So we take ourselves different from each other, which is not so. We all are one because soul is one. It is undivisible. It's one. It cannot be divided. But out of our ignorance, we take each other different. We take ourselves different from God. God is someone else and we are something else. This is the ignorance and Baba says, I have come to awaken you out of this ignorance. This is the ignorance. And why that ignorance? That ignorance comes because of impressions. So this is the vicious circle. In a way, this word helps us to get the God realization. In other way, because we are engrossed in this word, it gives us false impression and ignorance and we take ourselves different from what we are. So he is there to help us. So we should have the right thinking. What is the right thinking? We all are one. We all are one is the right thinking. We have to help ourselves to make this firm consciously think on this aspect and consciously keep ourselves telling. Why? Because it will help us again to do what exactly Baba wants us to do, not to hate each other. So if it is difficult, we can tell ourselves, oh, he or she is not different from me. We are one. So it will help us not to hate. When we get angry, we have to tell, oh, he or she is me only, so we should not get angry. When we cannot forgive, we should think, oh, it's not a different person, it's me only. So it will be, it will be easy for us to forgive that person. So this right thinking, he has come to help us for this right thinking. And Baba has always emphasized on the balance of head and heart. So how can we achieve the balance between head and heart? I think in creation and causes, Baba has explained it. Heart should not come in a way of head and head should not come in the way of heart. They should not cross in each other's paths. How is that possible? So Baba says, whatever heart has decided or taken, the head's job is to see how to implement it. Whatever heart has decided, head has to bring it in practice. Head has to think, how can I bring it in practice? How can I implement it? Head's work is to implement on whatever heart has decided and help this way, they can go hand in hand. Suppose, any of you have deci has decided to go to Meraba. And heart says, oh, so much I long to go to Meraba and get to refresh Baba's love in my heart. And what head says, oh, he's everywhere. Why to go to Meraba? Is not Baba here? This is conflict, but head should see if heart says, I want to go to Mehrabad, head's job is implement, do the planning. How can I save the money to go to India? How can I go? When are my holidays? How can I manage the funds? How can I manage my stay there? How can I book my MPR stay or where I say, this is the job of head to implement. This was a small example uh, to make the point clear, the balance between head and heart. Heart says, oh, I have to go to Mirabar. So head's job is to implement it, bring it to actual practice. We'll go to next para. The greatest mistakes have realized 
through personal experience that God alone is real and everything is God. This means that though you may not be aware of it, it is into bracket, the highest is Latin in each one of you. That's an important point. Highest is Latin in each one of you. But in order for it to be lived and experienced in consciousness, it must be manifested. So each one of us is God, but we cannot experience. So it is to be experienced. The highest one in each of us has to be manifested. That is, it is to be experienced. How can we do that? By eliminating all the impressions. When ego goes, it do not go, it is transformed. It's a, then a different point. And when mind goes, annihilation of mind. Those greatest mystics who has told that God alone is real and everything is God, this they have not told just like that. This is out of their experience is an important point here. So, so important this is, in order to believe it to be lived and experienced in consciousness, it must be manifested. We are the highest of the high. The highest is latent in everyone. This is to be lived, so this is to be manifested. How it is to be manifested? For that, he has come to help us. Next, Baba says, <clears throat> Intellectual conviction of this truth is not enough. True knowledge consists in illumination, which finally culminates in union with the ultimate reality. This last is the state of Christ consciousness, which is my permanent condition. Here, Baba has used the word Christ consciousness and he does not say God realization, but what he means to say is God realization. Only theory is not enough. It is to be experienced. It is to be realized. And only true knowledge the knowledge of these worldly things is not a true knowledge. This true knowledge comes only at the time of seventh stage, seventh plane. Till the seventh plane, true knowledge do not come into picture. From first plane to sixth plane, the knowledge, there may be ample of happiness, bliss, and power, but no knowledge. True knowledge comes only in the seventh plane. And Baba says this Christ consciousness is Baba's permanent condition. Next, Baba says, we are on page number 10. The obstacles to elimination are certain mental tendencies and desires connected with egoism, which in the East are called sanskaras. The sum total of these tendencies and desires creates the illusion of a separate self at war with or isolated from other selves. The whole notion or the fall into matter made the creation of such a separate self necessary. Otherwise, spiritual consciousness could never be attained in the flesh. Spiritual consciousness, God realization can be attained 
only in human form, only on the earth. In creation and causes also, Baba has made it very clear. Baba has explained seven words there. And ours is a seventh word. All the six are around us. And in the seventh word, it is the group of three words. Baba has named those words A, B, and C. And A is nearest to the creation point. And that is earth. So whoever is nearest to the creation point, now we call it earth. Previously, it was something else. Later, it will be something else. So one has to be on earth. Only on earth one can attain God realization. Only in human form, that is in flesh, one attains God realization. But there are obstacles for this illumination of realization. And what are those obstacles? Lust, anger, greed, all these mental tendencies are the obstacles. That's why Baba says, desire for desirelessness. Once the desires are finished, we have to work on it. If we try, he says, you walk, you take one step, I'll take 10 steps for you. So if you work on it, he is working on us. He helps us. So these are the obstacles in the illumination for which Baba says these are the mental tendencies and desires. <clears throat> Egoism, separateness, false ego, egoism. Nothing we are doing. Everything is done by him. And these things are called sanskaras or impressions. So these all things creates illusion. These impressions, because of the impressions is the illusion. The moment impressions, that is sanskaras are gone, the moment mind has gone, the way is clear and one is illuminated with the source of that light. God realization is attained there. Next Baba says, <clears throat> in the beginning, before evolution began, we were united with the source of all. But unconsciously, as the fish lives in the sea without being aware of the sea, because it has never left it. Evolution involved a separation from the source of all and consequent consciousness longing to return to it. Jay Baba, I think there was some disconnect. <clears throat> she looks frozen. Yeah, I think we have uh, Mayor Kripaji's Wi Fi connection. I, I don't think it's, uh, <coughs> it's uh, <laughs> not helping, <laughs> how to speak. So we'll wait a few minutes and see. <laughs> I'm going to pause. Yeah, we can go. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Something happened with my laptop. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Now I am doing from uh, my mobile. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. We can hear you. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes. 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 Good. Okay. I'm so sorry. So we'll uh, continue on page number 10, second paragraph. The conscious written to the source during physical incarnation only became possible when consciousness became equilibrated and grass matter. 
this is all baba is telling about the evolution different forms and with through which the consciousness consciousness is developed and finally gross consciousness human consciousness becomes after all the impressions are gone it is free from the impressions and it becomes divine consciousness this is the seventh plane and later that when one is able to become sadguru then it becomes unlimited consciousness next baba say <clears throat> America represents the vanguard and synthesis of the white races and hence forms the best foundation for the spiritual upheaval I will bring about in the near future. America has tremendous energy, but most of this energy is misdirected. I intend to divert it into spiritual and creative channels. This is very, very important. Usually, Nest Baba never mentioned his mission, his work and all that. But in West, he has clearly mentioned what far he has come, what is his mission. And he has made it clear the lot of ample of energy in America is misdirected. Misdirected is it's for materialism. And he wants to channelize it to the spirituality and creative purpose. That is spiritual channel. He wants to it. And he wants to bring about a spiritual upheaval. He has come to give a spiritual push to the whole world, to the whole universe. I'm now going to California for a few days. Baba is telling he is going to California for a few days. From there, I must go to the far east for one day for spiritual reasons. But I'll be back in California by the end of June. And then I'll speak on June 29th. This is May 32, Baba is telling that June 29, 1932, he'll speak. But if I should be delayed, I'll return on July 12 and speak on July 13. But we don't have to get disheartened. He speaks in our hearts. And we have to learn to listen that language. His language of silence. He speaks through his silence. So if we say that Baba has not kept his promise, it's not true. It has multiple dimensions. He is eternally speaking. We fail to listen to his language and understand his language. We are not able to that, do that because we are not prepared for that. He speaks eternally in our hearts we have to learn to listen his words in our hearts you know there is one story not story one anecdote to this incident there is one incident happened in mumbai when baba was there many people many of these families of course his family many families they used to tell each and everything what is happening in their families and they used to ask everything to Baba, what is the decision to be taken and all that and all that. So one day, one of them does the daring and boldly she asks Baba, Baba, now you are there amongst us. So we consult you, we ask you, we tell you, but when you will not be amongst us, how can we take the decisions? Whom shall we ask? And Baba gives a beautiful answer, which is for all of us. He says, I speak deep in your heart. The sound, the answer, which will come from deep from your heart, 
which we call inner voice, will be my voice. Baba himself has told us, the inner voice will be my answer and we have to learn, we have to practice, we have to habituate ourselves to learn, to hear that inner voice. And we can do it only when we close our external ears. We keep this shut, which comes in the way of heart. So this was Baba's profound answer. Further, Baba says, when I speak, there will be many proofs of my spiritual power and of my ability to bestow illumination. People will then realize the truth, which is the source of all love and existence, rules supreme in all departments of life. These if Baba says, I will speak, I will speak, I will speak. These are the ways of master. He speaks in three languages. His language, our language, and mixed language. An ordinary man cannot understand other two languages. We understand only gross language. So why he has told, why he might have told that I will speak? Just to give the inspiration which was more required at that time in the West, maybe. In these courses, there is a chapter, Ways of Masters. We cannot understand the ways of Master. But he knows all of us. He sees everything past and future. He sees our all past lives and he knows exactly how to deal with it. So just to inspire ways, he might have told. And as I say, that he speaks eternally in our hearts. So that may also be just to give the excitement that was necessary at that time in the ways. His ways, we cannot understand with our limited mind, limited intellect. He is unlimited. So un how unlimited can be understood by the limited one? <clears throat> so Baba says, it is not practical to have spiritual ideals. Okay. I, uh, we have to yet to uh, read it in source of all love and existence. My work and aims are intensely practical. And as we see, Really, his ways are very practical. In today's world, if we see in India, there used to be so many so rituals, home, havan, worship, all that is not possible in today's world. And if we see really world has changed, at least in India, we see drastic change. Going to God with the, your foot shoes and foot wear was not possible. It is bad. But if you see, by wearing shoes, people are folding hands to God. And they will just do. They, will even, they are even giving flying kiss to God, which is Baba's practical ways. This was not a tradition in India. So Baba says, my work and aims are intensely practical and we experience them in Mumbai. If you travel by local Mumbajan, whether he is Christian, whether he is Hindu, they will be reading some small spiritual book or chanting something or doing chat. So in their own way, methods will be different and that is not a bar. So Baba says, it is not practical to ever overemphasize the material at the cost of the spiritual. It is not practical to have spiritual ideals without putting them into practice. What spirituality says, what Baba says, help others at the cost of your own comfort. This only saying is of no use. 
how best we can bring it into our lives is important. Just to say repentance prayer is not enough. So daily we have to determine not to say the lies. It's a simple thing, easy, and it happens. Not to hate others, very easy. Nothing is impossible, nothing is difficult with, by his grace. So Baba says it is not practical to have spiritual ideals without putting them into practice to love each other, which is very difficult, but we have to try try and practice ourselves. Few things come by practice. But, but, but next Baba says, but to realize the ideal in daily life, to give a beautiful and adequate form to the living spirit, to make brotherhood a fact, not merely a theory, as at present, this is being practiced in the truest sense of the world. And this we are experiencing today, East-West gathering, how East and West has come near. We are experiencing it. And Brotherhood is getting established slowly, slowly, little by little. My work will arouse both great enthusiasm and a certain amount of opposition. This, that is inevitable. But spiritual work is strengthened by opposition. And so, it will be with mine. It is like shooting an arrow from a bow. The more you pull the bow string towards you, the swifter the arrow speaks to its goal. So here Baba completes his third message by stating that his work faces opposition and with the opposition, his work is strengthened, he says. And our mind asks how it can be. So he gives a beautiful example of arrow and bow. The more you stretch the Go the faster and longest will go the arrow. Now, before proceeding for the fourth message, we will open for any discussions, questions, shares. Hey, Baba, go ahead, guys. Any hey, Baba, I won't be able to see the handrails and all that. <laughs> yeah, but no, uh, uh, sorry, what is that? Uh... Madhubaji, what's that? I know if there are any hand raised or if there is any question. Yes, you were telling something, Mr. No, I, I just uh, was mentioning when you were uh, disconnected for a few minutes. Uh, this sentence was uh, it struck me uh, in the in the passage that you uh, read. So uh, I'll read that quickly here. Baba says, in the beginning, please, please, yeah, before, please. Uh, before evolution began. We were united with the source of all, but unconsciously. As the fish lives in the sea without being aware of the sea, because it has never left it. Evolution involved a separation from source of all and a consequent conscious longing to return to it through a succession of lives and forms. I, I loved that sentence, you know. <laughs> we always can always ask ourselves a question, why should we separate? I mean, why should we get away from what we have been though unconsciously? But this one really helps us that, uh, you know, uh, the example of fish in the sea, not knowing about the sea is <laughs> a great simile here. I was just mentioning that to everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Exactly. This is very yeah. important point. Baba states here beyond, beyond God's state. Yeah. Through the, the example of fish, Baba is telling about the beyond, beyond it, the God's mm. state. That we were in that state and we didn't know yep. who we are. 
<laughs> and right. unless he leaves the ocean, he will not show me how to lift that God state and automatically we came in this illusion. And all this illusion, nothing but only imagination. That is what Baba says. It's out of the imagination. Yeah. And, and the other one, which I also very much liked, is, uh, which I see here because I'm currently here. So it says America represents the vanguard and synthesis of all white races. Say I live very close to New York City. When I go there, I can see that, you know, there's so many nations represented there, almost like 170 or more. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's such a beautiful cauldron of all races. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I can imagine why Baba uh, said this, uh, I mean, at least intellectually, that uh, it is the best foundation for the spiritual upheaval I will bring about in the near future. <laughs> of course, it has a lot of energy, but it's, it's a beautiful mix of all races with so many, uh, you know, uh, cultures that blend here. And this is a perfect uh, <laughs> place, I mean, for him to bring about the upheaval in the spiritual, uh, yeah, in the spiritual world or whatever. So that's another uh, paragraph which I really loved. Yeah. So you are witnessing the effect of Baba's work now there? Oh, yeah, definitely. Everywhere. I mean, uh, actually, particularly yeah. the pandemic did a lot. <laughs> and pa pandemic enabled people to, you know, come across and meet virtually, which is what we are doing now. And uh, that that definitely was a big step. Uh, people I didn't know before I have come to know. And so that also means I'm learning from various people and uh, <laughs> uh, trying to implement what about told us to do. I mean, at least to the extent I can, yeah. It's beauty, beautiful. Yeah. Baba's each and every sentence, each and every word, he has oh, given yeah. so much in the, it's, it's really beyond description, Only as only Baba can do. <laughs> as only Baba yeah. can say. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, anybody, uh, you're all free to ask, uh, share your thoughts, comments, questions, and uh, go ahead. And all that you need to do is unmute and speak. <laughs> Well, I'd, I'd like to say something because two things. One is there, there is an ancient story from Upasni Maharaj that Ram, the avatar Ram, is actually the father of all the white races and that all the white races began in India and it was in the gradual crossing through the Middle East so the Middle East is also children of Rome and into Europe and, you know, the change of climate kind of changed, adapts our skin color a bit. So that all of the Middle East is also a part of this amalgamation of the vanguard of the white races, according to Upasni Maharaj, which really to me explains, you know, Baba being Zoroastrian and bringing us all together um, gradually east and west with um, those in India and the Middle East being such an important um, contribution to the United States of America as a part of this vanguard, not as something entering into it, but according to Apasni Maharaj, as a part of this. I don't know if that's what Baba meant, but I just wanted to offer that because, um, and also because we all bring, um, you know, the formation of this country. That's a long story. And I know something about it from Joseph Harb. And he says that he and many other souls close to Mayor Baba were in the other world when the, this country was formed and that they communicated with the founders directly about the formation of this country. So here we all are. And <laughs> just <laughs> wanted to offer those two bits of information. Thank you. This is such an inspiring hour. Thank you. 
Uh, well, that's a great thought, Jill. I mean, it's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Jill. Yeah. Thank you for this share. Yeah. There are six volumes of Upasni Mahara's lectures. Hmm. Anyway, so if there are no other questions, can we proceed further for message number four? It's also a beautiful message. Yeah, we'll please. try to finish it, complete it today. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, we, I think we have, uh, uh, from the time perspective, another 15 minutes or so. Uh, so okay. Yeah. okay. We will not be able to complete it. So if anyone uh, want to discuss or share, fine. Or we'll go for the reading. No, as we, you you, I think my suggestion is if, if, you, uh, if it's okay, you can just read and then probably discuss that uh, uh, in the next uh, available. Fine. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. So uh, together we will read. I'm sorry. Toge yes, you do have book. So yeah. then you can uh, uh, so from page number 13 you can start. By okay. the time you get suggested, I'll just continue the reading so that we can complete at least this message, which is very beautiful. Yeah, this is page so, uh, yeah, on page number 12. Okay. Message to reporters in Hollywood given by Meher Baba on his arrival in California, May 29, 1932. Okay. So you want so me to read? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, go ahead. So it's been said and written about the highest consciousness and God realization that people are bewildered as to the right process and immediate possibility of attainment. The philosophical mind waiting laboriously through such literature only ends by learning a few intellectual gymnastics. The highest state of consciousness is latent in all. The Son of God is in every man, but requires to be manifest. The method of attaining this great consciousness must be very practical and must be adapted to the existing mental and material conditions of the world. The rituals and ceremonies instituted by the preceding churches have made the process of attainment too dry, and that accounts for the lack of interest felt all over the world towards religious things in general. India, in spite of its high state of spirituality at the present moment is very caste region because of the enforcement by various cults of a plethora of rituals and ceremonies which maintain the form but kill the spirit. Forms and ceremonies Instead of diminishing the ego, strengthen it. The stronger the ego, the more aggressive it becomes. In the anxiety to become conscious of a separate self through thinking thoughts such as I am in the right, I am the favored one, I only have the right to live, one becomes destructive. The furious race for armaments by the Christian world, evincing an utter disregard <clears throat> for the commandment of Jesus, <clears throat> sorry, that if one chick is smitten, the other should be offered, shows clearly what I mean by the ego. In the evolutionary ascent from the mineral, vegetable, and animal life, the latent mind gradually expands and develops till full consciousness is reached in the human form. To create this very consciousness, the universe emanated from the infinite ocean of knowledge and bliss, that is, 
God the absolute in the human form. However, a difficulty is confronted to remove which prophets and spiritual masters have periodically visited this earthly plane. Besides full consciousness in the human form, as a result of previous conditions of life, the ego, the I is evolved. Mr. Prakash, please carry on page number 13, para number 2, the ego. Okay. <coughs> okay, Baba. The ego okay. is composed of fulfilled and unfulfilled desires and creates the illusion of feeling finite, weak, and unhappy. Henceforth, the soul can only progress through the gradual suppression of this finite ego and its transformation into the divine ego, the one infinite self, but retaining in full the consciousness of the human form. When man realizes this state of divine consciousness, he finds himself in everyone and sees all phenomena as forms of his own real self. The best and also the easiest process of overcoming the ego and attaining the divine consciousness is to develop love and render self-service, selfless service to humanity in whatever circumstances we are placed. All ethics and religious practices ultimately lead to this. The more we live for others and the less for ourselves, the more the low desires are eliminated and this in turn reacts upon the ego suppressing and transforming it proportionately, transforming it proportionately. The ego persists to the end not till all the six out of seven principal stages on the path culminating in God conscious state are traversed or traversed is, is the ego completely eliminated. Let me read that again. Not till all the six out of seven principal stages of on the path culminating in God conscious state are traversed is the ego completely eliminated <clears throat> to reappear on the seventh plane as the divine I, the state of Christ consciousness, to which Jesus referred when he said, I and my father are one, and which corresponds to the state of living in the infinite and finite at one and the same time. The above is the normal procedure for one who works on his own initiative without having come across a living master. With the help of a perfect master, the whole affair, however, is greatly simplified. Complete surrender to the divine will of the perfect one and an unflinching readiness to carry out his orders, rapidly achieve a result not possible even by rigidly practicing all the ethics of the world for a thousand years. The extraordinary results achieved by a perfect master are due to the fact that being one with the universal mind, he is present in the mind of every human being and can therefore give just the particular help needed to awaken the highest consciousness latent in every individual. Uh, should I continue? Yes, yes, please. So nicely you are reading. Then a we'll, uh, few points we will uh, discuss. Jai Baba. Perfection, yes. however, in order to achieve the greatest result on the material plane, must possess a human touch and a keen sense of humor. I eternally enjoy the Christ state of consciousness. And when I speak, which I intend doing in the near future, I shall manifest my true self. Besides giving a general push to the whole world, I shall lead all those who come to me 
towards light and truth. This, in short, is my mission in the world. The ability to perform miracles does not necessarily connote high spirituality. Uh, let me read that. The ability to perform miracles does not necessarily connote high spirituality. Anyone who has reached the Christ consciousness can perform them. People must not come to me merely for help in their physical infirmities or for material purposes. I shall perform miracles when the time and the situation demand and not to satisfy me mere ideal curiosity. Spiritual healing is by far the greatest healing and this is what I intend to give. The highest is latent in everyone, but it is to be manifested. Jai That's okay. end of us. Thank you so much. It's such a nice uh, thing. This, uh, two, three important points in this. The ego can never be destroyed. Hmm. But it is transformed. The false ego is transformed to the real ego, which is the universal ego. And his is the universal mind. And so he knows the mind and thoughts of each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And not only us human beings, right from the stone, earth, insects, trees, plants, everyone. So their mind does not come into the picture. Mm -hmm. Till the form of vegetable, mind does not come into picture. Mind body is not developed there. But this ego, false ego has to go. Separateness has to go. We are all one. What is the, another important point uh, Baba is telling here, which is very, very important, that I shall lay all those who come to me, those Baba has made it very, very clear in creation and causes also that whoever knows him, follow him and all those who are in the outer circle for all those Baba has kept in one group and Baba will take care of them all. So here also Baba has given an assurance from God himself that whoever comes to him, he will take them to the truth. We don't have to worry. He has already is fixed for when to get God realization or liberation, how to get it. We only have to work on it. This is his mission for the world to push the everyone towards spirituality, to attain the goal of the life, which is to get the world realization. The next point, important point is miracles. Mm. So Baba says in creation and causes, if Sadhguru and Avatar needs to do any, they do not do any miracles. Mm. Why not? Because Baba says he has come to take all of us out of this illusion and maya. <laughs> so to do any miracle, give the job, give the gold, give the wealth, or do the give the child, is all miraculous as putting again into illusion and maya for that he has not come. It is a child's play he is telling. The real miracle is to make us like him, mm. to make us God realize. That is the real miracle he is telling. And he says, those who are mine, I will take them blindfolded by putting a, a cloth on their eyes. They don't have to suffer all the sufferings of the path that is from the plane one to seven, whatever is there. What are the dangers of those planes? They don't have to suffer because he will take care of his people, those who are following him in this regard. Baba says, if someone comes to me by hearing my miracles, that his bowing down and namaskar will be for that miracle, but not for me. 
Mm. That is as Baba has said. Baba also says that Sadhguru and Altas do miracles only for the spiritual purpose that that too for the whole world, for your whole universe. And when they need to do such perform such miracle for spiritual purpose, they station themselves on fourth plane. Altar Baba says, do not do miracle by placing himself as an avatar. He comes down to the fourth plane. He places, stations himself on the fourth plane where the maximum power is there and from there they do the miracle. That is also one of the important things that's mentioned in uh, creation and causes. Another important uh, thing Baba explains there about miracle is he does not, Avatar or Sadhguru, do not do miracle for any specific purpose, a person. Because the impressions of that persons are entangled with so many other persons, so many other souls. And to undo it and to solve it all it is a great burden which is not practical, which is next to impossible. So he not, do not do miracle for any specific person. If anyone thinks that some miracle happened with him or her, it is due to his or her faith, strong faith in God. And it is because, suppose it's a Sadhguru and his disciple feels so. So it is due to the powers are there nearby those Mazhubs, Brahmipur, Sadgurus, Autar, all the powers are existing nearby them. So if someone believes them, have strong faith in that Sadguru and Autar, automatically that person gets benefited. So the miracle happens. So that's why Baba says, I do not do a miracle. I am not aware of it. That is the meaning of this uh, sentence. Then Sometimes, sometimes Baba says, only for the spiritual reason when he says, in discourses Baba says, if suppose someone is on the spiritual path and if this path is becoming too dry for him, too boring for him, for him so to give the inspiration to that person, sometimes small miracles are done for that person only for the spiritual purpose to give some push to that person for the encouragement and inspiration only then then baba says and this that line spiritual healing spiritual healing is the greatest healing what is this spiritual healing so not to feel hatredness for someone in our mind. If someone does bad or harms us, still feeling love for him and forgiving him, not to feel any attachment for any worldly matters, not to have the greed for grabbing those things, not to have lust in our mind, not to feel separateness and this is what the spiritual healing is and for this he is working on each and every of us believe it or not if you observe minutely you will find this change in you if your efforts are sincere, we will find it ourselves. May not be now. If we look back 20 or 30 years of our life, we will find what I was then and what I am today. 
if he, if nothing upsets you that is spiritual healing he is working on you and this is the greatest of compassion of his Uh, the time is up and so I <laughs> must stop. <laughs> no, I like, the, I like the way you mentioned about spiritual healing, what it can actually mean in the physical world. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And Thank I have you. one question though. Let me ask you this. Please. Uh, I'll take you back to the previous section that you read. Uh, uh -huh. And then in on the page 10, uh, okay. Baba says, I mean, it's just the usage of the words that uh, took me, I mean, that uh, that are not clear to me. So Baba says in the second paragraph on page 10, the conscious return to the source mm -hmm. during physical incarnation only became possible mm -hmm. when consciousness became equilibrated in gross matter. I, I'm just trying to see what it means that uh, equal, equilibrated in gross. Yeah, matter. when it is balanced, that is gross. Mm -hmm. The conscious return to the source during physical incarnation only became possible when consciousness became equilibrated in gross. That is matter. good and bad sanskaras are equilibrated. Oh, okay. Which is next to impossible. Yeah. So, yeah. what is this consciousness became equilibrated, that is balanced. I see, I see. In yeah. mass matter. So, for this consciousness to become a divine consciousness, one has to be on the earth, in on this earth. One has to be in a gross world that means and one has to be in a gross body mm, yeah i take it in that way yes makes sense. what do you have any other thought no makes sense i mean the balancing yeah. of sanskara in gross only in this gross body that's why we say now that human body mm -hmm. is very very precious yeah in is in india that is a thought that the life of human is very precious mm. and human body is very very important which is which we get with our good fortune it is also mentioned in one of baba's huma ghazal also he says i am so thankful to you for giving this gross body but now Remove my khudi, selflessness, separateness, and merge me into you. That is in Huma Ghazal. But so the, that is what I feel. Because God realization is possible only in human form. Right. So he says in gross matter, mm -hmm. that consciousness, human consciousness, becomes divine consciousness yes only in human form mind annihilation is possible oh okay that that's what those words mean equilibrated in gross matter yes that now makes makes sense beautiful what you just said thank you thank you that's uh, wonderful any other thoughts anybody yeah please so yeah. One important matter here Baba mentions is on page number 13 and last para complete surrender to the divine will of the perfect one. So, <laughs> how to bring it in practice? How we can may, make it practical? Complete surrenderance to his divine will uh, what I feel that I'll share, then all others are free to share. Baba says, when we do our daily, our duties for this world, in this world, when we are performing our, we are doing our responsibilities, we are doing our duties, 
we should not be attached to it. How we cannot attach to it? We should not have the feeling that it is mine. So this owning feeling, I own this, I own a house, I own a bungalow, I am this, I am a big officer, I am a big businessman. So we should not have this feeling. I have a family, this is my husband, this is my daughter or son, this is my wife. Nothing is ours. Neither this family, nor family members, nor this job, nor this service, nor this business, nor this house. Nothing is ours. But everything is his. And we are only the trustee of this family. We are only the trustee of this business. We are only the we are only appointed on his behalf to take care of our family, husband, wife, case, job. When we establish this feeling that everything is his, we are only the caretaker or trustee, we, it will help us for detachment. Then we will not worry about the results, so it will help us not to worry and be happy. It will not give us any worries and it will help us to be, to acquire that equipoise which Baba says always. Also, if when we are not worried, then we can accept whatever happens as his will. And then it will be very easy for us to accept whatever happens is his will because this job is his. So it is his will to give the promotion or to not. It is his business. So it is his choice to successor, get the loss in the business. It is his family. So it is his will, whatever happens with the family. So this feeling will help us to accept whatever happens as his will. It will help us. Moreover, the situations and conditions which are beyond our control we cannot control any good or bad situation. And we have to go through it. Suppose a bad situation is there, it is beyond our control. So we are helpless. So why to panic? It is better logically, practically, it is better to accept it as his will. And if we accept it happily, it will not make us sad. It will not shoot up our BP. It will not make us sick. So practically also, this is a practical solution he has given for our benefit. Whether we accept it as his will or not, it will not do any difference to him. It's not going to benefit him. It's not going him to make him highest of the high or downgrade him. It's God. So this tip, why he has given to accept it happily as his will, because it's not in our hand. The situation we cannot change. So why to better to surrender happily and accept it as his will? This is a practical, logical solution. And this is the way how we can go through it. It is all belongs to him. So the other benefit, spiritual benefit of it, if we gives everything to him, the ownership of everything to him, we will not accumulate new, more samskaras. It will also help not to form new samskaras, to weaken the old samskaras. And even if the new samskaras are formed, it will be very feeble. So this is in our benefit only, he has told us. So automatically, why we worry? Out of fear, the fear of the future. This will happen, that will happen. So if it is owning to him, it is owned by him, why to fear? 
greater whether the loss or profit will be his we should not worry so automatically worry will go and we will accept his as his will this is my point if any other there please you can share yeah archana ji has something to say jay baba yeah a beautiful talk and just a little feeling i get is that we are all so full of ego and i think what baba wants us to do is try to overcome that ego and only when we overcome the i me mine will we be able to actually surrender everything of ours to him and accept him as and he will as the ultimate that's what we fail in because we just uh, find it too difficult to get away from i did this because of me this happened whereas we have to understand that it is none of our doing it's all him and him alone so he is actually helping us by constantly pointing out to us that we have to somehow or the other annihilate our bloated ego that's what i struggle in and i guess with his grace some day we should succeed somewhere at least some percent thank you jay baba uh thank you archana grover was it uh, thank you perfectly said that once it is given to him no ego yeah ego is the this when desires are there ego will be there when desire is accomplished we feel egoistic when it is not accomplished we are irritated so again the ego comes in the way that is the vicious circle beautiful thank you very much i think i see no hands at this time and unless anybody else has final comments uh, we'll uh, meet next time <laughs> but thanks mahit kripal ji that was wonderful actually i mean nice uh, and and those uh, two uh, messages from baba uh, are just beautiful i mean they're so loaded i mean i tell you <laughs> they're so loaded uh, thank you baba and thank you each one uh of you that is encouragement for my gross form <laughs> <laughs> and uh, before we conclude the session um, as we do here if you don't mind uh, we can do small prayer and aarti sure sure please go ahead yeah uh, so um, yeah yeah um, uh, dr goel is there neelam is there so they can do small prayer and aarti Uh, anyone needs to want to do arti i can see all the party uh, yeah yeah so goel sir can do prayers and uh, surekha dongre is also there she can do arti so it is a chance for them also to serve for baba yeah yeah and also encouragement inspiration in a way i hope uh, this is okay beti will do Thank you. Yes, you'd like Thank me to which um, the prayer? Which one? Yeah, is it, if we do the Mr. Goyal is there Arun Arun Goyal and his wife Neela, uh, yeah. they will do prayers and the Surekha Dongre will do Arti. Is it okay? I said yeah. Yes, perfect. Thank okay. you. Thank you all. Thank you, Baba Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Ki Jai. O Parvar Digar, the preserver and the protector of all, you are without beginning and without end, non-dual, beyond comparison, and none can measure you. You are without color, without expression, without form, and without attributes. You are unlimited and unfathomable, beyond imagination and conception, eternal and imperishable. You are indivisible. and none can see you but with eyes divine you always were you always are and you always will be you are everywhere 
you are in everything and you are also beyond everywhere and beyond everything. You are in the firmament and in the depths. You are manifest and unmanifest on all planes and beyond all planes. You are in the three worlds and also beyond the three worlds. You are imperceptible and independent. You are the creator, the lords of the Lord. The knower of all minds and hearts, you are omnipotent and omnipresent. You are knowledge infinite, power infinite, and bliss infinite. You are the ocean of knowledge, all-knowing, infinitely knowing, and the knower of the past, the present, and the future. You are knowledge itself. You are all-merciful and eternally benevolent. You are the soul of souls, and the one with infinite attributes. You are the trinity of truth, knowledge, and bliss. You are the source of truth, the ocean of love. You are the ancient one, the highest of the high. You are Prabhu and Parmeshwar. You are beyond God and the beyond beyond God also. You are Parabrahma, Allah, Ilahi, Yazdan, Ahur Mazda, and God, the Beloved. You are the named Isaac, the only one worthy of, worthy of worship. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. We repent, O God, most merciful, for all our sins, for every thought that was false or unjust or unclean, for every word spoken that ought not to be have been spoken for every deed done that ought not to have been done. We repent for every deed and word and thought inspired by selfishness and for every deed and word and thought inspired by hatred. We repent most specially for every lustful thought and every lustful action, for every lie, for all hypocrisy, for every promise given but not fulfilled, and for all slander and backbiting. Most specially, also we repent for every action that has brought ruin to others, for every word and deed that has given others pain, and for every wish that pain should befall others. In your unbound mercy, we ask you to forgive us, O God, for all these sins committed by us and to forgive us for our constant failures to think and speak and act according to your will. A beloved God, help us all to love you more and more and more and more and still, still yet more till we become worthy of union with you and help us all to hold fast to Baba's Daman till the very end. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Thank you, beautiful. Uh, do, Surekha Tai, Jai Baba. Surekha Tai Dongre. Ha, Jai Baba. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Oh, glorious eternal ancient world, your face is a bright transcendent sound. Lighted this dark world and the tears I weep. My heart may hear I give to you to keep. Creator, yet creationless you are. Truth and truth, body, divine avatar. Truth, compassion, the three world maintains. Destroy this ignorance that life sustains. These five heads are the worldly spokes of brain. Of the world will that bears me on today. Unless true be kind. Break the wills of which is conditioned mind. This incense is my love, this fruits my arm. Which to please you I have shaped from my heart. 